This vlog is for those of you who think that if you have a formal equivalent translation, you can see it reflecting the underlying Greek structure. The angel's talking to Mary, and to encourage her, uh, the angel tells her about Elizabeth being pregnant, and then in Luke 1.37, he concludes, and I'm going to use the King James just because it's such a familiar verse. The angel says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, there is no way that you're going to get from those words to the Greek. The Greek is, for not, it will be impossible from God every word. Now, this is Hrema which generally refers to the actual word that is spoken over here in BDAG, words say expression or statement of any kind, and yet it can also mean the event that is spoken about, and the glosses are thing, object, matter, event, and that's where BDAG puts our verse. So you can see what's going on in the translations is that the question is, is Harema referring to the actual word of the prophecy or is it more general in that and that it's everything spoken about every event every matter well if you go with the latter that's how you get end up with the king james for nothing but if you go to some of the more modern translations you're going to have in the niv you're going to have for no word from god will ever fail in ESB, nothing will be impossible. ESV, nothing. CSB, nothing. NRSV, nothing. Net Bible, nothing. NLT, for the word of God will never fail. Isn't it interesting that the translations that are more formal are going with the more generic meaning and the NLT, which is a natural language translation, is really trying to stick to an English word that would reflect the meaning of the Greek word. You know, if we talk about translations being formal equivalent or dynamic or natural language, but the fact of the matter is they may have general tendencies, but they tend to be all over the place. There's at times the NESB is very dynamic. There are times the NLT is actually a little more word for word than many of the other translations out there. But there's no way that you're going to get yeah, especially if you're looking at the King James, there's no way you're going to get from the nothing back to every word or panharema, every event that which is spoken about. This also illustrates another problem in translation. It's really an issue of language. And that is language is not overly precise. I've often said that language is the stringing of one ambiguity after another. And you may come to this passage and say, well, is harema the word that the angel said? Or is the harema the event that the angel is speaking about? And sometimes in our exegesis, we strive for more specificity than language can really maintain. I would imagine that the angel chose the word harema here to draw attention to the actual words of the prophecy and yet the point isn't so much the words, is what the words mean, the promise that Mary was going to have a child, just like Elizabeth is pregnant. So be careful at trying to drive too much specificity to what a word means. It may be just a little ambiguous because that's generally how we speak. Very few of us speak with scientific precision all the time. I have a good friend who's an electrical engineer. He is a PhD and designs circuit boards. And one of the interesting things in talking with him is that it seems at times that no matter how precise I try to be, I'm never quite precise enough for him. It's a difference in personalities. And so he drives language to its absolutely precise end. And that's, and that's fine. He's a good friend. But Language can't always convey meanings that precise. 
And so I think we have to allow for a little flexibility when we do our exegesis and not be trying to be too precise as to what words mean. Words have meaning in context. What does the context require? Well, no word of God's is going to fail. And that means that the events prophesied by those words are never going to fail. Aren't you glad that's true?